Hi everyone! Today we will explore the recently announced NVIDIA NIM platform that helps develop AI applications quickly. We will use it to skip a whole bunch of work, starting with an environment where everything we need is already installed. Our AI model is there, our server is there, and if we just tell them what to do, then we have a program. So in this video, we will use Llama 3.1 to chain a series of prompts and generate our very own costume dataset. So are you ready? Let's roll! So first of all, what exactly is NIM? NIM is a computer environment designed for fast AI decision making. In technical terms, it is a set of inference microservices where inference is the decision process and microservices is a type of software structure common in the field of AI. And its idea is to combine a few small independent micro software together, but make them act as one unified program. So for example, we take an AI model from one service, we take some real-time data from another, and then we mash them together with a bit of Python. Now, to accomplish it, we need an environment with the right conditions for all components, because if one service doesn't work, then probably the entire software is broken, but this is not an easy task, especially if we are using services that somebody else developed in a different programming language for a different operating system and so on. To solve it, NIM gives us a set of production-ready microservice structures, each designed for a different task. One of them is for reasoning, another is for vision or speech or even some biological use cases. So essentially, we are dealing with a task-optimized pipeline where software and hardware are perfectly tuned for one another. Now, given the NVIDIA portion of the name, you can already tell that the hardware leans on graphics cards. Specifically, a software platform named CUDA, which I covered in great detail in previous tutorials. But since certain tasks perform better on CPU, CUDA is only used when it makes sense. And when it doesn't, we delegate it back to our processor. Now, each NIM has three main components a server through which we communicate with our AI model using HTTP requests, an engine that stores information about our model, its parameters and weights, and finally, we have a runtime layer in charge of executing our program. It uses the engine and the requests from our server to produce a response quickly. So if we use an image generating engine and we ask our server to produce a photo of a cat, then the runtime will execute the request and get the server to respond with our nice little image. And that's generally how NIMS work. Now, lastly, to make sure we spend very little time on coding, NIMS are based on a collection of APIs, where APIs, or Application Programming Interfaces, are a way of exchanging information between one software and another. It uses something called keys to identify and authorize those who need access. So by clicking on a button that we put inside our program, we can interact with platforms that somebody else developed, such as X or YouTube or OpenAI. We just generate the appropriate API key and we're pretty much good to go. And great, we are done with the introduction and we can finally see NIMS in action. So let's begin by navigating to the NVIDIA API catalog at build.nvidia.com, where we can choose from a variety of tasks. In my case, I will go for reasoning and I will do so with a model named Llama 3.1. Now, if you're not familiar with these models, you can always test their capabilities in the preview section. So, for example, we can ask, what is the first AI model to run on GPU? And we get this very long history lesson in response. Now, if you think it's too much information, you can either adapt your question or you can just choose a different model. And the best part is our preview is immediately translated into code, including our nice little question. So we can just copy and paste it inside our working environment. But how exactly do we set it up? Well, first of all, let's sign up, or in my case, log in. And by signing up, ooh, 
no typos, by signing up, you will actually get 1000 free API credits to explore any kind of NIM you'd like. So let's go ahead and hit next. Now, in terms of deployment, we actually have two options. If your system has enough memory or VRAM, then you can run your NIMS locally. But in my case, I will need more processing power than I actually have. So my friends from NVIDIA have set me up with their Launchpad Lab program, which gives you access to NVIDIA hosted infrastructure way more powerful than my system. Now you can of course request access on your end, or you can use the special launchable that I created for you on a platform named Brev. So all you need to do is navigate to the link in the description, click on deploy launchable, open your Jupyter notebook and enter your NGC API key, which we will create shortly. And then the very first cell will get your name up and running. Now the first 20 viewers will get to deploy their launchable absolutely for free using the coupon code python-simplified-brev. It gives you $10 of credits. So navigate to your Brev billing section right now and enter it quickly before somebody else does. Now, one last detail before we start coding, I promise. The rest of this tutorial was filmed before Llama 3.1 was released. So even though I'll be demonstrating my workflow with Llama 3, on your end, I've set up Llama 3.1 on the launchable. So not only will your app will be better than mine, but you will also get to play with the most up-to-date version. So yeah, let's roll. So from the launchpad portal, we will open the coder IDE where we will find some detailed setup instructions. And our first task here is to specify our NGC API key. But where exactly can we find it? Well, let's navigate to ngc.nvidia.com. We will click on welcome guest and we will sign in. We will select this gibberish organization. And if we click on our username followed by setup, we can then generate our personal key. Now let's go ahead and choose a name and we will select NGC catalog as part of our services. Once we do so, we will hit generate and here's our top secret NGC API key. So let's go ahead and copy our personal key. Let's go back to our IDE and let's create a new terminal. We will then use the export command to create a new variable NGC API key, which we will assign to the key we just copied. And now we can officially deploy our NIM. To do so, we will need a Docker container with the following settings. Now, if you're not familiar with containers, I have a great tutorial for you. But the general idea is we are using Docker to create an isolated environment on NVIDIA's cloud where our NIM will run. We will interact with it using our terminal and we will remove it as soon as we are done using it. We will of course give it a name of Meta, Llama 3 and so on. We will give it access to GPU hardware and we will give it our NGC API key. Then finally, we will connect a folder from our editor to a folder from our container using port 8000. And with these settings, we will run a Llama 3 model with 8 billion parameters. Now let's go ahead and copy this very, very long terminal command. We will paste it below and we will run it with enter. Now, once our app is running on port 8000, we will go ahead and create a new file. We will call it dataset underscore maker dot IPYNB. Now, to verify that Llama is ready, we will try to connect to our container from this Jupyter notebook cell. To do so, we will type exclamation mark CURL, as in client URL, followed by localhost at the port of 8000. Additionally, we will need the following routes, slash v1, slash health, slash ready. Now let's give it a run with control enter, and beautiful, our service is ready and Llama is officially good to go. So let's go back to the NIM API catalog and let's copy the example code from earlier. We will of course paste it inside a new notebook cell and we will revise it a bit. Where first our base URL is HTTP localhost 
in the port of 8000 slash v1, just like we've seen in the previous cell. Additionally, since we are using NVIDIA's cloud, we don't really need an open AI key. So let's just set it to not underscore used. And we will also need to change the name of our model because we are not really dealing with 70 billion parameters, but rather with 8 billion of them. Now, lastly, let's ask this model to do something funny, such as write a heavy metal song about job search. Okay, now let's navigate to the very bottom of the cell because it will print our output dynamically. Let's give it a run. And oh, wow, look at this eternal quest for employment. In a sea of resumes and useless skills, I'm drowning, my sanity's at stake. Hmm. The job market is a cruel cold thrill where dreams are crushed and hopes are fake. Okay, <laughs> pretty good. But the only problem is there is really no difference between running this code or using the preview section. So let's go ahead and costumize it a bit, turning it into our very own software. And task number one is avoiding repetition. We don't want to write all these lines of code every time we ask a new question. So let's go ahead and define a new function called ask question. We will then copy the entire completion object into it and we will rename it to chat response just for extra clarity. Then we will return it at the very bottom. And in addition, we will replace the content of our message with a variable named user input, which we will receive as a keyword argument to our function. Ha. And now when our function is ready, we will go ahead and call it below ask question, passing it a string of write a heavy metal song about loving burgers. Then we will assign it to a variable named completion. And that way we don't need to override the for loop below, at least at this point of time. So let's go ahead and run this code with control enter and boom, we now have a simple way of asking questions and glorifying burgers, of course. But what is not yet simple is the way that we receive responses. So let's take care of that. Now, because we are streaming the response while it's being generated, we receive it in chunks rather than a single unit of text. So let's quickly set the streaming to false inside our function. And then we can get rid of this for loop below printing our completion object instead. Now let's give it a run. And okay, we see that this object has a choices argument that stores a list where the item at index zero holds our message. So let's quickly update our return statement, focusing on chat response dot choices in the index of zero, receiving our message only. Now let's give it another run. And okay, we see that there's one more argument to specify if we want to receive a string rather than a message object. And this argument, as you may guess, is content. So let's go ahead and add it to our return statement with dot content. And now if we run our cell for the very last time, we are finally dealing with a string. So what can we do with this nice little program? Well, how about creating a chain of questions? So for example, what if we ask Lama to select the name of a random country? We will then assign the output to a variable country. Then right below, we will ask another question. What is the capital city of to which we will concatenate the output from our previous question, country. Ha! Huh. We can then assign this expression to capital, and we will do the same for other attributes such as national food, and so on and so on. So let's go ahead and replace capital city with national food, and we will replace the variable capital with food. Now let's see what happens when we are printing the country besides its capital besides its food. And okay, we get a short story instead of the actual names. So let's quickly add dot just the name to the end of all our strings. 
and let's give it another try. And now we are dealing with three distinct entities, which in my case are Mongolia, Ulan Batar, and Bursog. I hope I pronounced it well, but probably not. Now, this is much, much better, but we can still improve it further. So what if we use the same principles to generate an entire data set of countries and their attributes? For this, we will import pandas as PD. And then right below, we will create a data frame with the following columns. The first one is country, the next one is capital, and the last one is food. We will then assign this expression to data, and then at the bottom of our code, we will wrap our responses in a for loop. So for i in the range of three. Now let's indent our outputs so they are part of the loop. And at the very end of it, we will access our data frame in the location of i, which represents each of our three rows one at a time. Now, once we selected it, we can go ahead and assign it to a list with country, capital, and food outputs. So it is a perfect match to our column names. Now, instead of printing our previous output, let's go ahead and print the data frame. Let's give it a run and yay, it worked. Here's our beautiful data frame. So now let's apply it on all the countries in the world. To make it work, we will need a list with all the countries in the world, which we will generate with ask question, to which we will pass a multi-line string. In my case, names of all countries separated by commas in an alphabetical order. In addition, we are looking for the names only with no other output. Now let's go ahead and store this question as all countries. And since we are looking for a list rather than a string, let's go ahead and copy this variable name. Let's reassign it back to itself, calling the split method on it. And into this method, we will pass the separator characters of comma space. Now let's see if it worked. Let's print our list of all countries. And great, we get a very long list of unique country names. So let's go ahead and copy our all countries commands and let's paste them right above our for loop. Then instead of iterating over for i in the range of three, we will do so for i comma country in enumerate all countries, which means that we can comment out our country variable and great. Now, once we are done, let's go ahead and save our data frame with two CSV, calling our file data.csv and passing the header of non. Now let's give it a final run. And once Llama is ready, we will open our new CSV file where we can find data about all the countries in the world. Bravo! And thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please share it with the world. And don't forget to leave it a huge thumbs up and all kinds of comments. If you'd like to see more videos of this kind, you can always subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you very soon in another awesome tutorial. So in the meanwhile, bye-bye.